Hello everybody, my name is Rodgun. I'm an artist, a designer, teacher, mentor, and today we are going to be learning a little bit about art together. So grab your sketchbooks, grab your favorite materials to draw with, and let's uh, learn a uh, thing or two. So what we're going to be talking about today mostly is going to be how to stay motivated and how to push your projects and how to like actually feel like you want to actually do something with your art in this coming year and how to actually like stay in that mindset. So let me load up the YouTube chat. Perfect. Well, first of all, happy new years to everybody. I hope you all had a wonderful meal yesterday at least. And I hope that you guys spent it with people that you love, even if it's just yourself. So I do, I did call it a night early yesterday. Like most of the time I'm like, most of the time I'm like super happy and excited to uh, stay up until midnight and like do the whole like, oh, uh, like, you know, like countdown and shit, but not this year. This year, like, it, it just didn't feel right. Like, I just don't feel all that joyous yet. I'm very happy for upcoming things that are coming up, but, you know, it was like, ugh. Can this year just be over? Let's, let's just start a new one. Like, like, let's just throw it in the trash can and like, just like start over. But motivation is something that we all kind of need from time to time. And in order for us to actually want to drive forth, even the pet projects that we think that we like will do one day, but like that day has not come yet. Or like, oh, we're not ready for this yet. Blah, 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 blah. blah. We all have those sort of projects, right? And we all have those projects. We all have that thing that we've been meaning to do for like a day and then it's like been like six months and it's been a year, it's been two years. Oh, but it's going to get done. It's just not now, but it's, it's going to get done, but uh, not right now because uh, it's not right. It's not time, blah, 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 blah. We all have that shit, right? So what we need to do is we need to learn the importance of actually pushing forward and then just doing things for ourselves a little bit and being proud of it and being excited for it right i i find myself struggling with that quite a bit i find myself struggling trying to find like a, more reasons and more reasons to do shit for myself when i have like the motivation and i have like everything else it's just the drive that's just not there for myself as long as it's for helping some other people, like, you know, these streams and stuff like that, it's really easy for me to just hop on here and be like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to help everybody else. Cool. When it comes down to helping yourself, it tends to be a little bit harder sometimes. So how do we find that? How do we find that joy in, like, pushing forth something that we are, like, terrified of, like, knowing if it's going to succeed or not? How do we like find that motivation and like that drive to keep at it when like things are like against us or like things aren't looking, you know, perfectly well? Like, how do you do that? And, you know, a lot of it is going to start coming like from yourself. Like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a tacky psychological crap that like everybody like cheap psychologists would tell you. But I think like the measure... And then, like, the enjoyment of the journey that we have, regardless of if it's a business venture or if it's, a, like, a career path and your, like, style choices and stuff like that that you want to achieve with your art. One huge factor in that is that you need to be proud of what you're doing. You need to be able to be proud of what you're actually working on. Uh, the thing is, a lot of us are so used to working with other people's idea of art in mind that we just kind of lose track of why we even got into the art field in the first place, right? Like, for example, it, it took me a long time to realize that I wasn't really happy with all the art jobs that I was having because I wasn't doing and using the art that I was, you know, like so adamant about being an artist about for what I went into my like actual career wanting to do. So I went into 
do like into art. I went into design because I wanted to do comics like Calvin and Hobbes. I wanted to be an editorial cartoonist. I just liked drawing comics, little silly like things about life and like journaling my life and shit. So I thought I would be good at like, you know, political comics and all that crap. Well, the thing is, I went into art school and then there they kept telling me that my passions were done. Like, that's not going to get me hired. The thing is, I never wanted to be hired. Right. Like, so I didn't really fall into that stigma and I didn't let that like bug me too much because I was like, oh, well, you know, like I don't really care about being an employee. I just want to do what I want to do and find a way to make money, you know, through that for myself. Like, I don't want to work for Disney because I don't care about being a credit in a like a project. I don't want to be immortalized through being like an assistant animator in or like a lead animator in like a movie. Like it's just not like something that I'm like craving to do. Like I'm much more so in, I, I would like to be more remembered, much more so like somebody like Frank Cho or uh, um, Bill Watterson, right? People that like crafted entire like stories and entertained millions of people with their doodles every single Sunday or every single day for the most part sometimes. Like, you know, edit, people like Garfield's, like, like Heathcliff's, Family Circus, even, even, even Family Circus was so fucking cool, you know, because we, it was just such a fun thing to do, to go and look at the funny pages, as they call them, and then just actually like see some funny like f like little tiny tiny stories like what we would like call like a little tiny web comic nowadays that was what like our sunday things is we just didn't get as many of them we only got them on sundays so doing that was always my main goal in art and when people kept on telling me that my choice of art is not the a re, uh, the right one, and you guys will get it a lot when you guys get told like, oh, you should not draw anime. You should not just draw anime. You should not do blah, 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 blah. Right? I'm, I'm like a, I, I'm a stickler for that because there was teachers that said that to us. And even though like I did love anime, I never really like felt like being an anime artist, but something just didn't feel right about some teacher telling like a student that they can't or they shouldn't do something that they like. As I become a teacher a little bit more and I've learned like how other people receive information and knowledge, I have realized that that is not necessarily what they meant. They just did not know how to fucking say it. What they try to say is that don't focus on a style so don't learn like for example let's do a quick like anime eye tutorial right thick eyelids do 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 in the shape of a square and then you come up with like the eyes inside right a typical anime eye is something like that or like really big and tall like oh my god and they have like ridiculous eyelids in like super cool like coloring inside blah, 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 blah. right so if i tell you to draw this in a side view somebody that just learns how to draw this style is going to be really fucked because it's going to be really hard for you to understand what's going on here for a person like me that got like i'm training on learning how to visualize things as a three-dimensional shape and like blah 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 I see this as a sphere whose eyelids are hemispheres. So I can easily take that same concept and just apply it to a side sphere. And then you have that same eye on the side. Yay! But like this is what they meant. Like they meant don't learn through style learn through form and function and anatomy and perspective so that you can apply those styles to your base 
form. So you can always change what you're learning. Like once you understand where things fall, especially with more anatomy in mind, if you understand where everything falls within the structure of an anatomical sense, you can take this and then you can start morphing this to make it more appealing to whatever style you want. This could end up being cartoony, this could be a vampire, this could be a monster, this could be whatever I want. But now I have the anatomical structure underneath to help me understand what's going to be going on with the rest of them. If he's going to have like a big upper lip, I can just draw the upper lip on my anatomy. If he's going to have like, I don't know, facial hair, I can map it out because I understand perspective, right? I understand that this has shape. This is complex shapes. These are not just spheres anymore. They're not just circles with like a little like V on the bottom, right? This is now a sphere with depth. And then the bottom part is more akin of just anatomy. Like you got to start learning what the anatomy is, like how it looks, how it functions. Because the head is not just one element. It's one static element in the form of your upper jaw and your skull. And then the bottom part is more mobile. Like you can move your mouth to be like in any way, shape or form. It's like a very, very, very mobile part. So I consider the head two completely different sections. I consider the head up until the mouth, up until the upper mouth, one section. And then the bottom part is another section because this can move, this can open, this can close, this can clench. So that is one thing that you can keep in mind. Anyways, I'm like distracting myself from like this whole motivation thing that we're supposed to be talking about. So in order for you to be proud of what you do and proud of your art, you need to start searching for the elements that made you get into art in the first place. Right? You have to learn and reevaluate again. If you've been doing this for 20 years, do it again. Think back as to why you got into art. Why did you get into the art field? Why did you become an artist? Why did you, like, why did you bet your financial future on artwork? Right? Because when you're young, we don't really understand that concept. But what you're doing when you go to college and you put a loan down and you get like, like, you know, like a ton of financial things going on for this goal of yours, you're, you're essentially investing in yourself. That is what you're doing. So if you don't take it seriously, what, well, I mean, I, I really don't understand. You're kind of like just betting against yourself at that point, right? A lot of people take a lot of big money loans when they're very young, so they don't understand the ramifications that come with not following through with this <laughs> and also understanding the risks that come involved with going into a creative field without understanding what the lifestyles will be like while like you know like different resources you're going to have what different avenues you're going to be able to have to be able to make a living right like we don't think about this shit because we go into this when we're really young like, and you don't start seeing those things until a little later in your career. When you've invested 10 years into your, like, you know, like career, but you haven't seen much growth. And then you don't really realize why. Well, a lot of the times it comes because we have um, this funny thing that happens to humans called ego. And ego is essentially the reason that we stop growing as artists. Look, whenever we are, whenever we go into art, the main goal at first is not to like create something that like, you know, perfect or refined or like has like a ton of like, you know, like knowledge and like skills to it. Nah, 
what we want to do is we just want to create something really cool that people will praise us for. Like, honestly, that is mostly the main factor that comes into play early in our careers. Like, we don't really think about, like, form and function and, like, you know, like, techniques and, like, refinement and marketing and blah, 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 blah. No, we think, like, oh, shit, this is fucking dope, dude. I wish that I could show this to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Panda Team Force 5 Saber. Ah. You know, like, we just get so excited that we just want to have, you know, it shown to the world because we think it's a cool idea and it's just something that we just want to get out. So once we get to the point in our careers, and this is for people that go to school and not go to school too, like once you get praised for your artwork, most people stop growing at that point. The moment that you get praised for it, it tends to be where you peak because we are so desperate to just go forth and create like this one thing to be known for this one style, to be known for this one like story that we forget that we are like stupidly creative human beings. <laughs> and uh, that one thing that you do in five years, you'll look back and be like, oh, like you, your career path changes so much if you go into it as a career like artist that you like you, you you honestly i can't even remember the shit that i was working on three years ago like you, you just end up working on so many things like and at one point like it, it gets really tiresome too like to work for other people like constantly like one of the my like, worst situations and this also falls into the whole like motivation thing is when I was doing like easy photographic work for a company that wanted to do like photo like you know it's like TV mounts and stuff like that for like just random shit that they would get from Taiwan. So I found the job so stupidly easy. Like it, it got to the point where I was just feeling sad because I honestly thought that I was just wasting all the artistic potential time that I could have you know like I could be using my time there so much more valuably if I you know had the resources to just do that and it would just make me really sad because the job like took all my time it took all my effort to just keep doing that same shit at that same crappy level because they would not accept anything creative either they just they knew what they wanted and they just needed a monkey to do it right that was pretty much it like they just needed a photoshop monkey and i, I just found it incredibly demeaning after a while not even though the pay was good like it was never about the money it was like like and i felt so unmotivated to do anything for myself that it was like a dangerous position to be in. And that's when I started reevaluating what I really wanted, you know, to use my career, like my artwork for. Like I did not want to do that sort of shit anymore. So I stopped, I quit. Like I, I literally, I took a deep, like deep, 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 deep thought and breath. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm out. I can't do this shit. Like, I'm going to end up killing myself just thinking of, like, like, I was really sad. Like, no, like, like, no joke. I know it's not, like, funny to joke around that shit. And it's not a joke. Like, that was some of the most depressed states that I've ever been in. So it's just it's essential for motivation and for you to actually keep going forth that you evaluate what you really want out of your art career. What are you using your time for? What are you using your efforts for? Uh, okay, we have some comments on YouTube. I have not looked up once. Jesus. Um, hello, everybody. Hey, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. But I don't know who we are. It's a perfect topic for a new year. Yes, Itchy Shark. Happy New Year. Everybody's happy new year. 
Dana Salasina, I saw you were at Disney World. Any motivation for sexy princess pinups? Ooh, oh, okay. I should probably, yeah, I want to do some cool Disney stuff. Like, I've been watching a lot of Disney movies. So, I've been watching and drawing, like, the characters from them. And it's just been really, really fun to do so at night whenever I'm, like, you know, just chilling. So, I probably should. That'd be kind of cool. Love the ethos that it has to come from you. If you make excuses, only one person suffers is yourself. Yeah? Oh, uh, do, 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 do. I didn't believe you could pull off a career as an artist, so I went for a different field, but now I really want a career as an artist. You know, like, yeah, it takes a lot of balls to, like, risk your financial backings on your financial future on on being creative. Um, honestly, it's it's terrifying thinking of how much money went into me learning how to draw by going to school for it like it's like insane how much i was willing to invest not really understanding honestly at that age what i was getting into you know because hey like i wasn't always like known and i wasn't always like making money with my art and to this day it's not like i'm making thousands i'm not a like a youtube like success story where like oh I, I get to do whatever i want no i still have to take work and i still have to do freelance work and i still have to sell my art in some way or another uh it's very much so still a struggle every single day because you still need to be able to find avenues in which to make money with so don't like you're gonna have a different lifestyle than some of your friends will at like your age uh especially when you're younger and you haven't established yourself uh you'll see people getting married and have like you know stuff like that and you'll be like ah i can barely pay my rent what the hell it takes a lot of effort not to go into something else when you see things like that and that's just honest, like, truth, like, speaking right here. This is the shit that probably no one's ever going to talk about, right? If you decide that you're going to focus on doing art, it comes with a little bit of a drawback at first because it's normally a career that takes off a little bit later. Uh, it comes with the establishing yourself. It comes with, uh, you know, like, learning, like, what your niche is going to be. And how to exploit that to make like profit and sustainable profit, not just like a one-time thing. You know, like when you do like artwork for companies or logos and stuff like that, it's normally like one-time thing unless you set up royalties or like anything of the sort. And those are a fucking pain in the ass as well. So it's just like honestly, sometimes it's not even worth like figuring that shit out. Like, it's just, just ask for a flat fee for the rights for your artwork, and then it's like, fuck it. Just, like, deal with it like that. Like, <laughs> I think I, when I was, like, transferring some stuff, like, I was transferring my files to my hard drive, like, recently. And it was, like, over, like, 20,000 files that I worked on last year. It was fucking dumb. <laughs> It's so many files. Like, yeah, there's some of them that were like revisions and stuff like that. But Jesus freaking Christ, man. Like, staying motivated is, is tough. And it's not going to be something that just comes to you. Right? You got to form habits. You got to form, um, you just have to form like, methods and ways that you can keep yourself happy with what you're doing while at the same time being productive with what you're doing and if you can find that balance which is not easy it is not easy at all to find that balance but if you do find that balance embrace it jump on it jump on the lead take the lead like jump like bet on yourself and then just go forth and like actually pursue that it's gonna be really really uh it's gonna be really good for you to actually go and do something like that for yourself uh 
uh, Happy New Year's, Dr. C. Tron. What were your favorite cartoons as a kid? Have you ever created how you see them? Have you ever created how you see them? Like, example, your own version of Popeye or Johnny Bravo. <laughs> oh, we can do, like, uh, my version of Johnny Bravo. That sounds cool. So Johnny Bravo is, like, this really, like, like top heavy dude that has like these little legs but he's always throwing like these like epic like hoo ha like poses so let's make uh johnny bravo in my style <laughs> uh, he also has like this epic pompadour hair <laughs> where did I get my sketchbook my sketchbooks are an illo sketchbook and I am very lucky to be sponsored by them so they just send me sketchbooks whenever I need them but they're very inexpensive they're actually like really really good sketchbooks too uh, I, I've been using them a lot uh, I alternate between these guys and the neek uh, I'm not gonna write it there but the Neek sketchbooks are really good too. And these guys allow you to put your artwork on them. You just have to be a little bit, uh, wait a tiny bit, but you guys can actually like make sketchbooks with your own artwork on them. And that's pretty cool. All right, so he has a big chin. Uh, he also has very big arms. He is very proud of his arms. And a big chest. So I kind of imagine that him and Gaston would have like a field day together. Hey, pretty lady. So as you can see with even with pen I'm just like very lightly just like going in and creating the detail like I'm not like too concerned with the sketch lines I'm not too concerned with anything I'm trying to learn something here so I'm honestly just going at it if it's messy it's messy fuck it who cares uh, I'm honestly whenever it's my sketchbook I'm not trying to impress anybody uh, and that's the mentality that I wish other people took with their sketchbooks like like, I stay motivated through seeing how much I've progressed for myself. You know, like, I stopped caring about comparing myself to other people a long time ago. Like, it's, like, the moment that you get that, like, ego out, they're like, oh, I have to be as good as other people. And you can start thinking, like, I can be as good as I am, like, and, and be okay with that. Like, once you get that mentality in mind, you will be a lot more successful as well. Because you won't feel like everything you do is compared to other people's success stories. And that happens so often with uh, just like modern, like living, like everything is a comparison. It's fucking ridiculous. Like, you don't have to, like, be at the same level as the people that you see on Instagram in order to be able to start your career. You don't have to be, like, as good or, like, you know, remotely close to anyone else. Just find your niche. If, if you can create art, you can make money with it. It really is, like, it gets to that point. Like, you just have to have that marketing sense to know 
how you can make money with what you do. So it's not just about being cool artists. You need to learn how to actually sell yourself too. Like, again, nobody is going to be as interested in your art as you are. No one. No one gives a fuck about your art as much as you do. Okay? So the whole trick to it is trying your hardest to learn how to make other people see that your artwork is fucking awesome. That is honestly like 90% of being an artist. Look at me. Look at me. I can do artwork cool. Look at me. Let me make the art for you. Let me do this for you. Let me create for you. But I think the moment that you as an artist get to the point where it's, hey, look at my stuff. You need this stuff. My artwork is not just for me to create what you want. No, my artwork is to make you want what I want to create. And see that like that stark difference there? Like doing artwork for yourself so that you can demonstrate that your art matters, your art is worth it, that your studies are like paying off. You need something that's going to be very, very much so something you're proud of because you wouldn't go home like i would never would have gone home and gone like oh my god you should have seen that photo shoot i did of that tv stand oh it was so cool oh man like everybody's gonna want to buy that tv stand now yeah like oh man i'm so proud of that shit no one no 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 that was never uttered and that would never be uttered in the my lifespan. It's just, uh, you know, it's a lot of factors that come into play to stay motivated on a day-to-day -day basis. Like lately for me, the motivation is to try to like build a stable life when I'm, where I'm trying to move. I'm going to be moving to Scotland. So I want to make sure that I have a stable job through a remote sense. So I'm going to be making courses. I'm going to be making books. I'm going to be making things that I can control and that I know that I'm good with. So that's my niche. That's what I found I was good at. And eventually it's, it's getting to the point where, you know, thousands of people are watching me online and draw and join and draw with me and stuff like that. So it's just really, really cool to start seeing a little bit of success. Uh, it's also really, really nice that, you know, like I am proud of what I'm doing because it's not that I'm just uh, busting out artwork in order to make people like happy. I'm doing what I want with my artwork. And I know he's blonde, but he's not going to be blonde here. I'm proud of what I'm doing. I'm drawing for like fun every day with you guys. And that to me is just amazing. I love it. I absolutely love coming on here every day and people are waiting to draw with me. That to me is success. That to me, regardless of financial like benefits or whatever, I have successfully created and done something that I've wanted to do ever since I was young. You know, just have an audience where I can actually share my work. That brings me a lot of joy. That brings me a lot of pride. That a lot, That is the reason and big motivator for me to want to do this every single day. I found what makes me proud of my art. And that drives me forward to be better at it. If you don't like what you're doing, it's going to be really hard to keep at it. I'm trying to forget my art style. How do I do that? Uh, it's getting in the way of learning anatomy. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to take a sip of coffee and, and, and you're going to, you're going to sit and reflect on what you just said to me. Okay. Think of why that is such a silly thing to say. How do I get rid of my art style? Oh, oh, 
dear baby Jesus. Like, oh my God, like, ah, why do you need to remove your style? Why do you need to get rid of your style? Like, you worked hard for that style, right? You work really, really hard to develop a certain art style. Why would you just get rid of it? Are you in, like, it's not an impossibility to learn how to draw, like, dynamic poses and perspective and anatomy while also having a style like that that means nothing like the only thing that's going to happen is that if you have like a crazy style like oh, let's say you're drawing like eyes like this like, bah, 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 bah. right that normally wouldn't be able to be like made into like a more dynamic thing well now you're gonna be able to go in and you're going to be able to map out your shape and understand how you are going around it, fix it, and then you'll be able to actually do even more cool things with it. All because you understand the simple fact of it being a bigger element in your art. You can always unlearn habits. You need, maybe bad habits need to be unlearned, but good habits can be developed to counteract those habits. Spend a couple times a day just doing little exercises like these. Learning to subdivide things just visually where it looks right. If you need a help with things like that, I have videos explaining it, but there's ways to identify the middle section of anything from any perspective. And it's as simple as a cross from the endpoints of it and then just splitting it in the middle. If you do that visually, you can come up really quickly with the middle point of any thing that you draw. Now, understanding that simple concept helps you with pretty much anything here. Let's say that we wanted to figure out where this eye is supposed to go, and it's supposed to go in between these guys, right? So I just make a shape, cross it out, that's the middle. So therefore my eye just needs to be centered with that in the middle. Same thing here, eyebrow in, eyebrow out, boom, boom, cut it there, that's the middle of my eye. How did you learn to draw different races or ethnicities? Um, it all comes with understanding how the eyes work. Like, honestly, for the most part, most of the distinctions that come from, um, from race are more so just facial features that need to be adapted, like uh, stronger eye ridges, uh, thinner nose, Stuff like that. And yeah, we can talk about that right now. Ooh, ha, ha. Well, okay, when you draw people, it's hard to make people look exactly like themselves. Well, that's a caricature thing. That is an issue because most of the time it's hard for people to look at a person Right? Especially if you don't understand what you're drawing. Imagine you're like trying to draw somebody with angled eyes in like a thick eyebrow in like their nose is like perky but they have like a really thin upper lip but a really bad lower lip and a big chin. Right, like why is it so hard to just like think of these elements whenever you're drawing somebody that you're trying to like, you know, copy? Well, the reason is most of the time it's because people don't understand the placement of elements and they don't understand the anatomy underneath all this stuff. So they try to like find styles to try to like replicate what they're drawing, right? They try to replicate instead of drawing actual through anatomy and figuring out like, oh, well, a person, if this is an eye socket, 
the eye socket at the top of the eye socket we have your eyebrow line then you have your eyeball and then the eyeball has a curvature in the eyelid to give you self that angled look right and then if the cheekbone is high if the cheekbone is low that is the cheekbone right here and then when you start going into your nose like the nose canal that leads to the cartilage of the nose when you know more you're able to distinguish more right the more anatomy you understand the more you're going to be able to to shift things within a person if it's hard for you to get likenesses with people it's probably because you don't understand what you're uh, drawing all that much uh, you probably don't understand the basic concept of anatomy that goes behind understanding how to shift somebody's eyes from just being like a standard eye that just wraps around the sphere, right? Then you have eyes with eyelids. Then you have eyes that don't have eyelids. That they have eyelids on the side, which is a lot of... Uh, you know, like more Asiatic uh, like cultures end up having no eyelid or the eyebrow line is more so the case. The eyelid is still there, but the eyebrow line is lower, so therefore you don't see that. A more Caucasian look, European look, would be something along the lines like this. Uh, some uh, more uh, Middle Eastern people would have more of a heavier eyelid. So I would probably draw the eyelid a little bit lower on the eye. And they tend to be drawn with a slight droop as well to their eye. So they end up with a heavier eyelid. than other people I'm not just angling down the eye I'm understanding that the eyelid just behaves differently and the eyelid is as easy to find out as just drawing different hemispheres on a sphere and then just following them around get used to drawing that sort of exercise What are your tips for getting better at color theory, especially color harmony? Um, I'm a shitty person to one, like ask about color. Uh, I'm a colorblind, so I, I don't really understand. Like I can't see color like most people do, so I don't tend to give advice on it because it's it's just not something that I I can perfectly understand how other people are seeing it. So it's really hard for me to explain it in ways that make sense. So I try not to, yeah? Okay, so if you're stuck in drawing in your own style and it's really hard for you to break out of your style, what you need to do is you need to go back into your own style and then be like, okay, we're gonna do this with a random sketch that we flip to, okay? We'll just, uh, let's go to, ah, there you go. Right. We're gonna play with little baby hippogriff here. So. If you are stuck in a style and you're like, oh, okay, I need to like figure out like how, why this is not working. Start going into your design and start trying to see if you can break it down into its own three-dimensional shapes. See how you structure things and see where you need to fix or adapt into your own style. You need to have ability to be self-critical in order to get better. If you do not think or know what your mistakes are, then like if you if you don't understand what you're doing wrong when you go back and you analyze your drawings like this, then you need to study a little more anatomy or study a little bit more perspective. If you find it hard to be able to do this to your character and map out the front and the back side of your shapes, 
If you find this hard, you need to practice exercises like these more. You need to just go around spheres in different ways, slicing them. Slice, slice, slice. Learn to do this so that this becomes easy. Once this sort of stuff becomes easy, tracing a front and a back, tracing a front and a back. This will become second nature to you if you do this with complex shapes as well, like bean bags, stuff like that. Okay, so if you can do that and you can start seeing where your styling is off, like if your eyes aren't matching the other side and your eyes are like super wonky, then maybe try to adjust it so it looks a little bit less wonky. Like, <laughs> here's some drawings from uh, my, my little... Uh, friend Luna <laughs> and as you can see if you draw like this we could still find like anatomical structure to this if you really wanted to make this into even a little kid drawing can be done like this right front and back front and back front and back so even things like this can be done like this, and then you can start adding cool elements to it, like shadows and stuff like that, because now you can understand where the surfaces are. Like, like I know that this is the front now because I segmented this, right? And then just like a basic sphere, if it goes around, you tend to have, you know, roundness to it because it's going around. And those little segments that you draw help you figure that out right the face as well it's kind of looking forward so if i were to go in and create my basic shapes for it my grid it would be more something like that if i shaded it on this side well now this side is going to get shaded And since this guy's like throwing something, I'm gonna make him even. This is the front, so now creating a negative space can give me something like a bullet hole or like a splatter or like something like that as well. But now I know where it's positioned. Right, so even simple simple characters like this can be broken down into that so you can actually you know understand what you're drawing a little better and then it just leads to being able to draw things like this incredibly easy like it becomes a lot simpler to be able to draw poses like this shapes like this faces like this when you understand the concept of drawing from the front and the back and then you can have a lot of fun just exploring everything that you can do with those shapes and forms Ta -da. remember everything is a three-dimensional shape everything comes with and it, the more that you understand this the more that you actually like focus on this and you actually put this as a priority in understanding what you're drawing you will see such an exponential growth that i promise in like a month let's give it a week a week of drawing just like that and thinking like that will give you like to the point where you can just create anything you want i promise you you guys i believe in you how smart you guys are i believe that if you guys focused for a little bit and just did that especially if you're a veteran artist just focus on doing exercises like these and then slightly going more complex and more complex and more complex mapping the eyes out in different shapes different ways uh creating bean bags extruding things from like elements stuff like that well the thing is motivation my motivation my main motivation of this is that it's my career right this is my career i am serious about this i i don't feel like i'm in a hobby anymore my motivation comes heavily 
from an understanding that I am finally a person that can actually create something that people will want. I am proud of what I have. So if you aren't proud of what you do or what you have so far, go back to the real motive that you got into artwork. Think about why you got into the art field. Think about the motivation, how driven you were back when you were little and you wanted to learn how to draw and you finally did it and you finally figured it out. And now it's like, think back to that. Write it down on a piece of paper, put it in a little lockbox and when you really need motivation, talk to yourself. Let yourself know why you got into what you're doing. Why are you putting up with the fucking shitty clients? Why are you putting up with the long hours, the lay like less pay than other people? Blah, 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 blah. You sometimes need to be your own time capsule and tell yourself how important it is for you to actually keep this. And then reflect back and forth and remind yourself of how proud the person that's young in your life would have been if they knew that you would have already gotten to where you are. <laughs> so if you feel like you're in a hobby, it's well, then you either have not taken it to the next level and you haven't really considered like that you have potential to do it for a living. And it takes a big leap of faith to do that. It takes a gigantic leap of faith. You need to be able to, uh, it, it's like, it's nutty. Like you need to be super like, Anybody that's an artist for a living has my respect regardless of whatever they do, right? It could be a person selling their art on the street market. It could be a person, you know, doing murals. It could be a person selling little personalized keychains. Anybody that sells their art and is actually out there hustling to make it work has so much of my respect. Because it's so hard and it takes a lot of goddamn balls to like go out there and actually put yourself like vulnerabilities are high, right? Because you don't want to like have people make fun of you or like think of you as like a person that like did something nobody liked. A lot of people really care about what other people think. It's really hard to be an artist and be one of those people. But it happens. We all we all think about it like that. And we all want to make something that's really, really cool. Like that's just a universal thing. So losing that fear is going to be step number one. Right? Learning to like not be afraid to show our artwork, not be afraid to actually like, you know, be proud of the things that we do. Like we need to share what we do with people in order for people to see it. So, you know, get used to actually sharing on platforms that are going to actually help you. Honestly, the best one, and it's going to be like, sounds silly, but if you do not use TikTok and you feel like you want to actually show your work to human beings, you need to do that. You just need to get on that program because that's the only platform that's actually giving new creators a voice. Like it's doing what Instagram did a long time ago. It's allowing people outside of your network to see your work. Instagram doesn't do that anymore. Instagram started doing that a long time ago, and that's why even people with, like, 121,000 people on fucking Instagram, like, my stuff only gets seen by, like, a 1,000 humans every day. So it's just, like, so disconcerting and, like, annoying that I've spent so long building a platform that nobody gets to see my stuff because I don't want to pay the ridiculous, like, prices for that they charge to be able to reach my full audience. Like if I don't promote my stuff, I, my audience just doesn't see it. And it's just stupid to me. It's like they punish people 
sometimes for having more followers. It's kind of like so counterproductive. It's like ridiculous. But anyways, that's why I do shit on YouTube and TikTok. So Johnny Bravo has skinny legs, but he's always throwing like these weird leg poses. And I forget if he has boots or not. I think he has like high tops. The more you understand about anatomy, the more you're going to be able to do dynamic poses. The more you understand about perspective, the better you're going to be able to draw those anatomical shapes. So it's all like kind of bent in together. Like anatomy and perspective are two of the most important things that you need to learn. But it takes a while to get to the point where you understand them enough to be able to be like, oh, I can manipulate them and create my own things. That's normally why we learn it, so we can create our own styles. So, you know, it's the foundations are needed for you to be able to get better. And if you kind of jump through them and just kind of skip them with the assumption that you understand them, right? If you, if I told you right now, I'm going to put so many people on blast right now, but, but it's okay. Because I love you guys and I, I just do this with my best intentions in mind. Okay. I want you all to grab a piece of paper. Just grab a piece of paper. Just just go grab a single a napkin. Go grab anything you can go grab your hand. You can draw it on your hand. Okay. I I'm going to test you guys a tiny bit about perspective. And I want you guys to uh, to just try to draw it. And if you get stumped. Maybe you should go learn a little bit more about perspective. But let's talk about this for a second. You're going to want to draw three shapes. Draw me a square, a circle, and a triangle. Then after that, I want you to turn each one of these into a couple different basic profiles. Just come up with a sphere maybe. Do, 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 do. Drawing the front and the back you can come to a cube. Boom, boom, boom. Doesn't have to be perfect. And this one can be, a, I don't know, a cone. Why not? Okay, now at this point, I want you to take these and come up with variations of these. For example, with a sphere, it's a bean bag is a relatively easy variation of it right with this one another easy variation would be like something like a rectangle and a variation of a cone could be a pyramid or because it's basing it off the initial shape so let's draw a pyramid okay Perfect. Now that we can do this, you should be able to do this. You should be able to do this. Now I want you to draw each one of these shapes in just slightly different forms. So a beanbag, maybe draw it like that. The box, maybe draw it like a little bit bent and from a different angle. Let's draw it from a different perspective because it's a simple shape. So it should be relatively easy to bend. Uh, with this one, let's make a giant bendy cone. Like a hat. And see at that point if it's still easy for you to go around your shapes. Finding the front and the back of your shape every time. If this is hard at this point, stop here and go back and practice this one and these steps. If this is hard for you, go back to practice this. 
If this is hard for you, go back and practice this one. If this is hard for you, you need to practice very basic elements like going and finding the surfaces of elements. So imagine that you're just going to spend an entire day drawing lines over your spheres. That's all you're going to do. An entire day of finding like what it would be like to put rubber bands on top of a sphere all day. That's all you good, you're going to do because that's going to translate to shit like this. Being able to do it one way, the other way, and now you have an awesome epic eye. Or do the same thing and you have a really cool mouth. Right? This understanding of this allows you to do this, to do this, to figure out elements like eyes, ears, the jaw. All those elements come so much easier when you understand how to draw something from the front and the back. Okay? So that is an exercise that you really need to figure out. Once you learn how to do it in more complex shapes, then you can start applying that to things like a complex shape, like an arm, right? And an arm is just a bunch of muscles put together, which is kind of like a sphere into a cone into another sphere, into another cone. So that is why you learn the progression of complexity of shapes. You can't just always stick to drawing your heads like this, right? You can't just always think that all your heads are going to be well by drawing them like this. Just basically drawing this. This is like the kitty version of the process of drawing. Right? You need to progress past this. Once you understand this and you learn how to map out your elements, like I like to use a mask at the bottom of the sphere because it gives me perfect placement for everything, for the style that I want. Right At the bottom of the sphere, which is representing the top part of my head. So this, this is representing this. This is all that is representing. Okay. This is representing this. Now, however I decide to represent my sphere, be it squared, be it fat, be it skinny, all of those are representing this. That's your temples, your cheekbones, and the front. So if I just apply these same elements, onto each one of these, it's going to look perfectly fine. Eyes, nose, temple, cheek, different style, eyes, nose, temple, cheek. Different style. I'm gonna ex I'm gonna make this even bigger, so you can understand that it's not necessarily always just in the front. You can make these things as big as you need to. Style them in any way you want, but understand where the placement is so that you can always modify that. So let's say that the next step from here would be to figure out where your cheekbone is, which is right underneath your eye, right? The reason your cheekbone is there is because this is your eye socket, and then your cheekbone is just the protuberance of that eye socket. So these is your eye socket, and however thick your cheekbone is, That is 
what's wrapping around your eye. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. And then again, this just is simplified by creating a mask. So when you're drawing a shape, it doesn't have to be a perfect shape. Just learn the placement of things so that whenever you are actually drawing it, you understand what you're going to end up with. And those mapping techniques help me and visualizing this, actually visualizing this, like understanding that most of the features are in the front part of the head. If you're drawing a more anatomically correct head, not just a sphere, it would be more so with a big cranium because your brain is pretty big. So your brain fits right there in the head. And then you have all your features. mostly in the front. Right? And you need to allow space for your cranium, for your brain. So this is just a simplified version of, you know, a more complex, like, shape. And that's not even accurate, really. Like, that's kind of like still pretty, like, damn, like, simplified. But once you understand that, you understand... Also, another reference point is your ear. Your ear just comes... It's a behind your temple. So if you have your cheekbone... Ta-da. Ta-da. Cheekbone. Ear. Cheekbone. Ear. Cheekbone. Ear. Cheekbone. Ear. Eventually, you'll be able to just visualize these things without having to draw them so much, and then you'll be able to draw them better. The next element that comes into play is once you draw your nose, how do you like connect the bottom jaw? Well, the bottom jaw protrudes a little bit for your front teeth. So from your base shape, not from your nose, from your skull. Because remember, we're going into the skull. From here, you have your nose that comes out of here out of this little tiny ridge between the teeth. And here you have your nose canal. And the nose canal is tends to be just cartilage. So the nose can be in a lot of different shapes. The teeth then come up from there. And depending, like you can change the different lengths of it or whatever. And they go back into your cheekbone. Now that's the top of your mouth. The bottom of your mouth comes from the bottom of your ear, which is your jaw, and it connects to the front of your face. And that's normally also the space in where you have your mouth. You already have the top of your teeth, so you can wrap a mouth around that if you want to. Because you already have a shape that you can wrap something around. You have your bottom teeth as well, and then all you gotta do is fill in the negative space. Essentially creating a shape like this. If you have lips, for like a pinup or whatever, they would wrap around the teeth. And everything has volume. Uh, tips for getting the left and right eye proportional. See, I've always found that really silly. Like, why is it why is it hard to just draw the same size shape? If you have an a face and you have like a three quarter like if you if you under just map out your mask 
and then you start segmenting it more like your nose bridge blocks this part nose bridge then from there when you start creating your eyeballs just come up with your one that's completely in view and then for this one draw the same exact shape but just don't draw the parts that you don't see because of your nose bridge the eyes wouldn't change too much in size they just look skinnier because a lot of it is blocked by the nose bridge so you're not seeing the back part of it and then when you're drawing your eyelids you're not seeing the entire eyeball you're probably just seeing like a little tiny opening in the front of your eyeball so all you got to do is match that same opening on both eyes and then you have proportional eyes you even have your eyelids now and your bottom eyelids and your cheekbone right and your eyebrow lines like you have so much information by just drawing that mask and then you can go even further by learning the little points that connect to the other parts of the face i like to draw from the bottom of the cheek uh the cheekbone down to the chin and then behind the cheekbone i have my ear and then my mouth falls within these two parameters so i know that my cheekbone is gonna stop my mouth from going further so so little tiny anatomical things like allow me to understand the limitations of what i can draw <laughs> you've never seen that mask method well it's because I, I'm not going to say that I made it, uh, but it's something that I've been working on for a very long time. So it's just a very consistent way of drawing faces. And once you like understand the proportions of the stylings that you want, it's very easy to go in and create artwork within that style. Because then you just get used to the, the patterns. Like if it's something cartoony, maybe you can draw the eyes a little bit bigger. Wow. If it's something a little bit more realistic, you can come up with different stylings for what you need. But it's just a systematic pattern that allows you to have a base system for different ways of drawing and it's more based on just anatomical like you know like positionings and you know ways of placing things more so than teaching you guys a certain style to draw and i find that to be much more important and much better than you know just teaching someone how to draw an eye like draw a diamond and then draw this thicker and then draw a little tiny line underneath the diamond and then i don't know why but i'm gonna make them like this and then i'm going to add a circle and a plus sign and that is my style yay learn to draw eyes the rod gone way nah, i'd rather just teach you how to draw an eye right and then teach you that this is just the eyelid wrapping around the eye so that you can get much more depth with your design and you actually understand what you're drawing. Because that makes you much more capable, even though they look exactly like the same thing, teaching you how to draw and visualize things like this is going to make you a better artist while teaching you how to do this is gonna pigeonhole you into the styling that I choose to teach you. So it's just, yeah. It just has to be like that.
Dr. C, I think it's better that my art teachers tell me when I draw small. Uh, Jade as MX. Love your art, man. I hope one day I can paint some of your art. Well, I mean, feel free to if you want to. Like, I, I mean, honestly, it's, uh, I like it when people do fan art. See, like, once you understand this concepts, like, styling just becomes whatever you feel like drawing at that point. Right? Like, there's really nothing stopping you from just drawing all your styles that you have once you understand what you're actually drawing. But, like, a lot of the times people claim, oh, like, well, I only draw like that because it's not, it's not my style. It's not my style. It's not my style. I'm like, dude, like, you don't get to just have one style. You get to have hundreds of styles. You are a creative human being. You get to, like, do as much with it as you feel like doing. Like, the limitations of thinking that you need to unlearn a style because you need to learn realism is makes no sense to me you already have a style that you can adapt why not just adapt that and learn and learn another one and another one and another one and just eat them up like pancakes right like at the end of the day having a person that can draw in 10 different styles is going to be a lot more valuable than a person that only draws in one a person that has the versatility to combine all those styles together because they understand the concepts, you know, that build a style, then allows you to be even more valuable. And that's how you get jobs like in character design and shit like that. Like you have to be incredibly good at like understanding everything. And this is like a step forward to that. You can use these as little like tiny like lessons to help you achieve that if you, uh, you know, adapt these to a day-to-day -day basis. If whenever you're drawing, you think of a structure and the anatomy and the perspective of things, eventually it's just going to be second nature to you. And you're not even going to think about it. It's just going to be something that just happens. Drawing things like caricatures and like styling people in a certain way it's going to become second nature to you you will be able to actually actually bend the anatomy and the perspective in the way that you want creating a styling of your own it's that is how you build your own style understanding anatomy and perspective enough to be able to break it in a very specific way in that specific way is your style And the more you learn about this stuff, the easier you like start seeing being able to draw like other people. Because you start seeing like, ah, oh, all they do is this. Oh, all they do is take this part of anatomy and they do this. Oh, shit. Okay, that's it. Oh, man, it took me so long to understand that. But a lot of the times we don't understand what's going on and we think something is stylized when the artist is a master at that part of anatomy and then he is just like playing around with it like one example is chris sanders chris father freaking sanders his curvy women are just like amazing right like the way that he draws the legs the way that he draws the bodies it's always like super perfectly curvature like like but mega stylized and it took me forever to be able to replicate that style because I did not understand anatomy enough. Like I was not understanding some of the basic concepts of anatomy. And the reason that legs bend the way they bend is not necessarily like how I was learning how to draw them. Like legs are so stupidly versatile, right? And they come like you can like bend them in so many different ways. And we are taught that it's like, this like we are taught that this is a leg when in more reality it's more like a teardrop into a teardrop that connects into a hip bone 
at a side angle, not flat. So once you have that, you're able to map out a bunch of different positions. Once you have like a basic understanding of like a hip bone, then you can start moving your legs and doing exercises that allow you to see how legs would look going forward. Just learning a little bit of overlapping. How they would look like going to the side, how would they look like going backwards. A simple little tiny diamond can give you so much, so much practice. Like come up with the hip bones and then very lightly start drawing legs in different positions. and see how they connect to the hip bone. Like the Da Vinci-like things. Just get used to drawing this so that whenever you have to draw a character with like hips going like that, you can easily come up with a pose without needing to worry about thinking about how it actually connects. Again, the simple exercises are the ones that give you the ability to do this sort of stuff. But we don't do them because we assume that we already understand all this shit. And when we assume that we know, like, I mean, we end up not wanting to revisit that because we think, oh, well, I'm too experienced for that. I'm too experienced for that. I don't. I already learned that. I already did that. I already practiced anatomy. I already practiced perspective. Uh, why do I gotta do that more? I hear that so many times. Like it's so dumb to think like that. Like you should be practicing anatomy and perspective every single day. Period. Period. If you if you're actually aiming to be a top notch illustrator, and you're not practicing that shit whenever you're drawing like you are doing yourself a huge disservice like you are literally like putting yourself back like years so practice 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 can you show an example of a chubby leg and a hip yeah i guess so we have like a leg which would be like a hip bone right and then our normal leg would be like something like that okay so that would be a normal leg two little teardrops with the upper teardrop having the kneecap teardrop with upper kneecap having right so if you're trying to make this chubby all you got to do is add girth to your shape girth and then you have more chubby legs it's not about like just drawing a weird shape it's understanding the base level of it and then you can modify it i can make here, I, I could make him with a gadunk dunk by just giving more muscle mass to the sections. Because my shape is like that. So if I add more shape to it, more volume to it, it's just going to look naturally chunkier. But it takes a while to be able to understand how to visualize things like that. I could also make his arm super skinny, like if I wanted to. Because I know the muscle structure is in there, like this. Right? So all I got to do is just go around my muscle structure and I can create a very skinny armed Johnny Bravo. with the same hand. Even skinnier, shit. 
So it's because I understand the concept that this is two elements or elements that are building on top of my basic shape. My basic structure for this character would be roughly around here. With the muscles being extra on top of my shape. I don't practice off anatomy sheets. I just go on Pinterest and I just practice from drawings from other people. Uh, and then I, I work out a lot. So I'm not saying that I'm buff or anything, but I study how my muscles move. So I'm constantly researching and seeing how my flexible joints work against my hard surfaces. And it's just like I notice little bumps and stuff like that. And I can go back and be like, okay, well, I have pectorals and my abs don't start till like a little bit after so i know that there's some sort of rib cage or something or muscle there and then i just start working my way down whenever i'm thinking about my drawings but once i have my base structure it's a lot easier if you have like a basic shape that you already established as a body doing the little segments is going to give you the ability to start segmenting this a lot easier And then that leads to the rest of your body. Yes, it's not going to be an overnight thing. You're not just going to magically learn how to do this. But when you start doing it more and more and more and more, and you start thinking like this, it's going to be a lot easier for you in the long run. And once it does click, woo, welcome to heaven. Because this is going to, like, it's literally like the most fun I've ever had drawing. Because now I can just draw whatever I want. And it gives depth and it has style and it has anything that I feel like giving it. And it's just been a fantastic like little like trick to like understand and find out and like, for example, that, right? If we segment this, we could make this into a mouth very easily. Look big, pouty look. teeth, negative space and everything, and with an understanding that this is a shape with depth. That makes shading a lot easier because you can just follow the guideline grids. And then the sort of stuff, the more anatomy you learn, the easier it is to be able to draw from any angle that you encounter. You don't, you're not limited to starting with your shapes of your like mouth or your eyes or your head shape. You can just start drawing from any, that's like, you know, how like masters like the, oh my God, Kim, Master Kim, he just passed away a little while ago, but he would just go in and start drawing like, you know, elements of something. And then he would just progressively go in and start adding more detail to a scene. Right? He would just go in and start creating a story with elements. Just adding more detail and more detail every time. And he did it magnificently with a brush pen. So the way that he's doing stuff like that is because his level of understanding of perspective and anatomy and, and this visual library that he had in his brain was so intensely heavy and like so damn developed that it was just easy for him to just go in and draw and imagine like, like epic scenes every single time he wanted. <laughs> uh, forearm anatomy. Uh, do we have space for forearm anatomy? Yeah, I guess we have a little bit of space right here. Okay, so your shoulder, your bicep, you're going to identify the bicep. The bicep is on the front of your arm. So your arm consists of your bicep, your tricep, your forearm, and your hand. Okay? 
that is what your ORM consists of. So if you're going to be thinking of these elements as a basic three-dimensional shape, you got to think about them like this. Your bicep is going to be the top. Yeah, your shoulder is going to come in right there in between them. You have your tricep, which is a little bit more squished in than your bicep. Then from there, you're going to have a little bit of a space gap for your bicep. And that's like the little tiny like part on the other side of your elbow. Then you're going to have your forearm muscles that wrap around your bicep. And then this, think about it like a chicken, like a chicken drumstick. It's going to go into a thinner section so it's going to end up like a big rotisserie like like turkey leg or something and then you have your hand fingers and shit so most of the time everybody just tries to simplify this in the best way that they can um, so a lot of people do it like this, where they just have like a little lump for your forearm and that's fine, I guess, but like just understanding the little lump takes like a whole lesson in itself. So, uh, we'll have to actually like talk about that probably tomorrow. Yeah, that, that sounds like a good lesson since we're already kind of like finished up with this, um, arm uh, but quick tip though quick tip uh, whenever your arm is pointing up or your hand is like your arm hand is pointing in this little bump is going to point in right for your forearm if your arm is pointing down on the other hand though then the bump is on that side so the little bump follows the top of your head of your arm Imagine it like a little snake, like, but it has a belly. <laughs> so here, I think that's the reason this arm is up. There you go. That looks better. Here, it would probably be here since it's pointing forward. And you can see that. Uh, let me find draw some arms where did we draw some arms um, hmm draw a lot of legs lately um yeah, i guess it uh, kind of applies here too arm is pointing in so there's a stand in um, let's see uh, let's see in actual drawings so same thing here seeing it here as well hand is pointing slightly up so I made the bump up but yeah it's, it's just a basic uh, premise of design that you, know, you should probably keep in mind whenever you're like thinking about it but we'll talk about hands tomorrow I, I think I don't think I've made like a good arm tutorial lately we've talked about like the organizing and like how like everything is structured but I don't think we've actually made a good arm tutorial yet so let's focus on that tomorrow. That will be our good lesson that we do. So until then, my fellow peeps, my peep army, my fellow subscribers and everybody, I hope you guys have a fantastic start to your year. I hope you guys have everything and all the goals that you guys want to achieve. Make a list of them and then segment them into little tiny parts so you guys can actually get them done. Okay? I love you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy New Year's to all of you. Kick some ass and let's kill it. Woo! Let's go. Talk to you guys later. Love you all. Have a good night.